hello! Uh, nice to see you all again. I am not in my unicorn onesie. Today I'm going to talk about a secret book publishing reality rule. Um, the 1 to 10 books a day rule. Which, like, I feel like more people should talk about this, um, and they don't. So we're going to call this a secret, a big publishing secret that I wish that everybody knew. Um, because I have known this the entire duration of time that I have been published. I was first published, I first published myself in 2013, June 2013, and in, in preparation for that, um, I, like, while I was writing my, finishing my first book, um, I did a lot of research and I went to people's blogs, I followed people on Twitter, and I heard a stat then, I saw it, I think, on a blog, um, where someone said, the truth is, backlist books sell 1 to 10 copies per book per day if you're lucky. And you know what? That's true. I I don't know why I believed it because I think that often when we see facts about publishing like that that are like not awe-inspiring, they're more like humble and realistic, um, we tend to like go, but like my book will be different. And I didn't. I, I absorbed that as fact and went, okay, so I can do math. Um, if each book sells somewhere between one to 10 copies a day, and I might make, you know, in indie publishing with the royalties, if I, if a book is $4.99, I make $3.75 on it at 70% royalties. So 10 books would be um, $37.50. Okay, so the so the kind of the top end of down the road, what I might make on one book is thirty seven dollars a day, and that's the top end. The bottom end would be three seventy five. So if I have ten books out, then perhaps the income range would be thirty seven fifty to three hundred and three hundred and seventy dollars and fifty cents. No, three three hundred seventy five dollars. I can do math, but like not on the fly and not looking at paper. Uh, and then if I have 30 books out, well, you can do the math, right? S like for me, when I published 30 books became, and they have to, I mean, there's lots of rules here. They have to be connected. They have to be, you know, c pushed forward by backlist, uh, by front list. They have to be pushed forward by front list releases they have to be you know supported by a brand that that is like the best case scenario I right now you can't see it but there's bookshelves behind me at the other end of this room there are bookshelves and they're all paperbacks most of them are traditionally published these are paperbacks not all um I have there's my husband's uh, really into sci-fi and fantasy that's at the top of the shelf I have romance and mysteries at the bottom the only books on that entire shelf that I think because they're all old, like they're all, you know, at least a couple years old. Um, the only books on that shelf that right now my gut says sell more than 10 copies a day are the Harry Potter books. Obviously, I think that those are still selling pretty well. But, I mean, like any kind of mid-list author over there. And there are people who are doing well who are like, they have full-time sales. But, like, I look at some of those historical romance novels over there and I know that if I go look at Amazon now, Amazon's not the entire marketplace, but if I go to look at Amazon, let's just say one to 10 books a day on Amazon. I know what the rank looks like for if you're selling 10 books a day. Um, moving 10 units is the language actually on Amazon because they also have Kindle Unlimited, a borrow in Kindle Unlimited is the same as a sale. So let's say units moved, um, like to 10 um, units moved would probably be in the um, somewhere between the 40,000 and 60,000 rank might be the 20, 20 to 50,000 rank depending on what other books are moving but I think it's more I think it's more like 40,000 if you have a 40,000 rank um, on Amazon some that book has on average over the last little bit probably moved about 10 units a day and a lot of books move less than that so if you go and you look at, pick an author, pick anyone that you like, go and look at a book that's three years old and 
it, it might be a 10,000 rank. 10,000 rank would be pretty nice. That's 20 books a day. Or, like, maybe it's a 2,000 rank because they've had a new release. And so they're moving, like, 100, 110 copies a day. Um, but, they like, people don't rock at a 2,000 rank for books that are three years old that haven't been recently promoted. That's just, that's not how it works. Um, and I just said a whole bunch of numbers that probably don't mean anything to you. So, if you are interested in the numbers, if you're interested in the math, spend some time looking at backlist books. Then, come back, watch this video again. It might make sense then. And then think to yourself, how does this one to 10 books a day, or if you're super successful, one to a hundred books a day. How does that impact on my business plan? How does it impact on how many books a year I might want to release or how many promotions a year I might want to run if I don't want to have a lot of releases or um, how much do I lean on front lists because I don't have a big backlist or how much backlist do I want to create? How do I want to package my backlist in a way that generates sales down a whole series. So you only have to do that marketing heavy lifting in one spot and it benefits across a whole brand. These are very good questions to ask. And if you don't have the data, if you don't know this basic rule that books don't sell forever on their own at the same, like here's the other part of it. Um, six minutes into a video, let's, you know, I thought it was gonna be short, it was not gonna be short. Um, here's the other part of it. Front list sales, now that's where your huge bestseller range is. Like, um, because front list sales aren't actually just like on release, although there's that. Front list sales also include pre-orders. So a brand that has an upcoming release, so an author name that has an upcoming release, the strength of that author name and the strength of the books that have most recently come out will drive pre-order numbers right and the longer you can have a pre-order the more pre-orders you can collect this is great that's money that you make the second a book drops when you have pre-orders you don't make any money on that until obviously the book is delivered that's actually the point at which people are charged so pre-orders that's one chunk of sales then your book is released into the world so it's like a new release this week um in fact it's tuesday so there are a lot of new releases today um, so you have a new release on Tuesday and then, um, you have kind of release week sales. There's buzz. People are talking about it. This is a new release. Have you bought it? Have you bought it? Have you bought it? And so that, so there's kind of pre-order sales. Then there's front list, like release week. And if there's a lot of buzz release month, and if there's a lot of buzz, particularly like a YA book, um, that lingers on the bestseller list, those will continue for quite some time. Um, and then it's the same as in like music. Some books hit like gold status or like platinum. And just because they've hit the zeitgeist, those will continue selling even longer. And as long as they, as long as they, so the sales chart, right, is pre-orders like this. And right before release, it goes up a little bit. Am I doing this backwards? I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see what this looks like on video. And then release day, the, the, the chart goes up and then it starts to, tail off and some tails go down really quickly like you have all your pre-orders hit you've got this big release week or release day sales and then it drops and it and it's the point at which the curve kind of matches your pre-order numbers again it's kind of the point and if you don't do pre-orders then it's just when it matches like what other books sell um that's the point at which your book becomes backlist from that point forward once a book stops being front list like the thing the thing that that you tell people to read like someone comes to you and they're like what's your new release you tell them that's front list um sometimes it's until you have another release um sometimes it's just until people stop talking about your book um and then from that point forward it's backlist and it's at that point that the real secret of publishing is that they all sell about the same. It doesn't matter if your book sold 100,000 copies on release. It doesn't matter if it sold 8,000 copies on release and hit the USA Today. Um, it doesn't matter if you only sold 100 copies uh, to like friends and family. 
but then you pick up, you know, you release a couple more books. Down the road, all three of those books are going to sell in that one to 10 copies a day, maybe just on Amazon. Like, I mean, there are obviously, there are people whose books end up in multiple bookstores and then like, I mean, I'm sure that there's gonna be somebody, probably a YA author, who's gonna pop in like do, they'll do a response to this video if they ever see it and they'll be like I saw a hundred copies a day okay well you know then you're an outlier but it the numbers do not lie look at Amazon look at the ranks on pick somebody who's a bestseller best-selling author today go back pick a book that's four years old look at their rank pay attention to that for a while and you will see that there's a reason why so many people really hustle really hard on the front list side of things, but you don't need to. You can hustle like kind of modestly on building a really solid backlist that is consistent with your brand all the way across, that um, that you can market like all of them, you know, one at a time, ding, 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 and build sales. It's okay. Like if you can get to a point where you have 30 or 40 books in your backlist, of almost any length, then you can push those backlist books that you've already written. You don't have to do any of the writing work again. You can push those and you can make regular full-time money self-publishing those books on one to 10 copies a day. So at first it's kind of like a humbling stat. It's like, oh, no, oh, I'm not gonna like be able to retire on this one book that I wrote. No, that's very much an outlier behavior. But then, once you think about the numbers, it can actually be really empowering. So there, that's my secret. The, the thing that I feel like nobody in publishing talks about, um, and I hope that it was interesting to you. It was a little bit, this was a little bit of a rambly video. It was not as short as I wanted it to be. Um, I will be back next week after I finish writing Reckless at Heart, um, wearing the onesie and talking about social media. Um, have a wonderful week. And please hit me up in the comments if you have any questions.